Hey scholars, it's good to be back with you. This is another in a series of videos about statics and today I'd like to talk to you about how to find reaction forces. Reaction forces are the forces that the boundary conditions apply to a structure. So if we're going to do this, we're going to need a structure. Well, there's lots of structures out there. I found a company called Microcranes and they make these cool little portable cranes and these look like they'd be a pretty good uh, sample problem for us. So here's a picture of a micro crane. So here's a picture of it in use and there's a person in the picture. Now you figure the person's about six feet, a little less than two meters tall. So we get an idea of how big it is and we can estimate some numbers and at least get close. So to get started, we're going to need to draw kind of a diagram of the crane with some dimensions and uh, showing where the weight is. Okay, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? There's some dimensions. Now, we're going to need to know a couple of things. We're going to need to know how much weight we're actually hanging from it. And let's actually, rather than say weight, let's make that uh, 200 kilograms. We'll turn, that's a mass. We'll turn it into a weight here in a minute. And the other one, this is a counterweight. This is just a big bunch of metal back there. In fact, in the picture, it looked like it was probably some steel uh, plates or iron plates you could put back there to make sure the crane didn't tip over, to make sure the force there didn't go to zero. So what, the way I account for all this is I'm going to find the weight of the, or estimate I guess, the weight of the crane and uh, maybe a center of gravity for it. So I don't know exactly what this is, but I'm going to, the, the, way, the center of gravity of the crane itself better be back towards here. I'm going to estimate the mass of the crane of 350 kilograms. Is that right? I don't know. I didn't let, if uh, anybody from microcranes happens to see this, maybe you could let me know. But that seems about right. It's, this is an example problem, so if these numbers are a little off, it doesn't change the process that we're going to go through. So we have that, and I'm going to have it, uh, the center of gravity, pretty much where the crane uh, boom attaches. So here's everything we need to know. Now, the, what's going on here with those, those boundaries there? I've called those pinned boundary conditions. So it's meant to show that uh, if this beam wants to flex a little bit, it, it can there. It's, it's, it's rotationally attached there and uh, can slide back and forth on this end. Now, is this what the crane really looks like? No. If you look at the picture, it's set on some wheels, and I assume those wheels are, are pretty high strength. This isn't what it looks like, but this is how it acts. This sort of notational shorthand we've got, this, this, these uh, idealized conditions, really do represent what's going on in practice. So um, this is a way of showing any kind of pin condition. It could be really pinned, like you see on bridges and trusses and things. It could be wheels. Okay, in fact, I have here. I'll get this. I've used this before, but I'll use it again. Here's my longboard. See those wheels right there? pretty good bearings on them. When I'm standing on the ground, or standing on the board, and the board's on the ground, my boundary condition with the ground really is pinned, okay, because this board can flex if it wants to. So this doesn't look like that or that, but it sure acts like that, so that's what we do. Alrighty, so this is good. This is a working diagram. This is not a free body diagram. So what we need to do to account for support conditions is we're going to remove that, these, these two uh, uh, pin diagrams, and we're going to replace them with forces. Forces are how the, the world, you know, the earth, talks to this structure. That's how it communicates loads back and forth. So I'm going to get rid of this and this and replace that with a force up here, and I'll just call that A maybe. And I'll call this one B. Okay, and just make it clear that should line up. There we go. So those forces there are A and B. Now, this really is a free body diagram. Now, it wasn't before, but it is now. 
in free body diagram, the, 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 the word we care about here is free. It's now freed from its supports, and the only way it knows the supports are there because of this force and this force. Those are called the support reactions. Right? So all we got to do now is run through a basic statics problem to figure out what those are. Now, it doesn't matter really what the internals of this structure look like now. The only things I need to care about are a couple of dimensions here and a couple of masses that are going to turn into weights. So let's do what we always do. Remember the, the recipe? Recipe is step number one, working diagram. Well, that's what this was and those pictures I just showed you. Step two of the recipe, free body diagram. Step three, write out equations of equilibrium. Step four, solve for something. Step five is optional. Uh, after completing the, pro the problem successfully, we can enjoy baked goods, but optional. So, we did one and two, let's do three. Let's do what's called equations of static equilibrium. Well, there's only three in a plane like this. So, some of the forces in the, well, wait a minute. That x doesn't mean anything if I don't have some positive, uh, a positive sign convention defined. So let's do that. Normally you put it up here, but I've got some room here. So let's, let's put x, y in their moment there. There. That tells us what our positive sign conventions is. X is positive to the right, y is positive up, and the moment is positive counterclockwise. So some of the forces in the x direction equals zero. Well, there aren't any. Now, are there internally? You bet there are. But the structure as a whole, there's no forces on it in, in the x direction. So that was easy. Forces in the y direction. Well, let's see. We've got to turn this into a weight. So let's call this weight of the crane. And let's see, I got my little cheat sheet down here. It's 3433.5. Newtons, and I'll call this just weight because that's the what we're trying to lift, and that's 1,962 Newtons. Okay, so there we go. Those are our two weights. So let's add this up. Those are down, right, and that's opposite our sign convention. So let's will be negative. Minus 1,962 Newtons minus 3433.5 Newtons. Now, plus A, plus B. Those are up, so those are in the positive direction. So, look at that. So easy a professor could do it. Next thing I need to do is I need to sum the moments about some point. Well, what point? I can sum moments about any point I want. Well, if I choose wisely, I can get one of my uh, variables to cancel out and it makes a little e the algebra a little easier. But it'll work anywhere. It does not matter where you sum the points. Some are more convenient than others. I'm going to sum about A, because that way there won't be any arm due to the force at A, and that, that variable drops out. I'll have an equation where B is the only thing I don't know. So I'll solve for B, plug that in there. Oops, sorry, it's got equal to zero. Sorry, missed that. Um, uh, solve for B, plug that in there, get A, and I'm done. I'm off to enjoy baked goods. So I'm going to sum the moments around point A there. Now, I've got a distance here perpendicular to the applied load going through A of 2 tenths of a meter, 0.2 meters. Because the weight is on this side, and I'm going to, I, I can always extend the weight along its, its line of action, that, if I put my finger there, weight acting on that side is trying to make that crane turn counterclockwise. Well, that's positive. So 0 0.2 meters times uh, 1. Actually, let's do this. Let's, let's just leave this uh, as a letter for right now as a variable. We'll, we'll plug that in later. All right, next one. Well, there's, there's no, uh, let's move that over here. Um, there's no uh, uh, distance there, so that doesn't matter. Now, I've got 2 meters to where the center of gravity of the crane is. So now, if I put my finger right there, this force is trying to make the crane turn clockwise. Well, that's negative according to my sign convention. So, minus uh, 2 meters times the weight of the crane. Next one, B, is at 3 meters. Now, this one's, I've got it drawn up. Put my finger there, this is going up counterclockwise, so this one's positive. 
And let's see, so I've got that one, yes, that one, yes, that. Okay, so I've got all three of them. And that all has to equal zero. So if you solve this, plug uh, that in for WC and plug 1962 in for W, you get B equals, let me make sure I get this right, 2158.2 newtons. Well, plug that into here and you're going to get A equals 3237.3. And those are, I'm going to double it underline here, those are the support reactions. So that's how you figure this out. You treat the entire thing as a rigid structure, draw a working diagram, draw a free body diagram, equations of equilibrium, and then solve. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.